A few twists and turns above Porta San Nicolo, this affable piazza has a carnival atmosphere at sunset and is the most popular vantage point for views over the city. I'm talking about Piazza Michelangelo, but what's that church up on the hill? Miniato was an early Christian mater who, after his beheading in central Florence, walked up to this hillside spot with his severed head tucked under his arm. It was easy to see why he chose this as a final resting place. The views across Florence are spectacular. So was the church itself. Began in the early 11th century, it's a marvel of Tuscan reminiscent with geometric marble facade, Byzantine style mosaics. Floors paved in beautiful patterns and duplex style choir raised above an even older and more atmospheric crypt. The church also has frescoes by Agnolo Gatti, a terracotta sculpture by Luca della Rabbia, and a freestanding chapel by Michelozzo. Brunelski's red tiled Dazzler Verdome represents two feats of genius. First, there's the fact that he was even able to build it at all. No one has tried such a feat since Roman times. Nearly 115 meters high and 42 meters wide, it remains nearly six centuries after its completion in 1436, the largest masonry dome in the world. Then, of course, there's the sheer loveliness of his creation with its eight marble ribs, gold-appointed lantern, and four million bricks that seamlessly float above the city's rooftops. More pointed than a perfect dome, it both reaches towards the heavens, yet remains firmly planted in the heart of the city's worldly affairs. Dedicated to Santa Maria del Fiore, the cathedral is the fruit of the dedicated work of many artists who collaborated in its building for various centuries. Begun in 1296 by Sienese architect Arnolfo di Cambio, the world's fourth largest cathedral took almost 150 years to complete. Behind the Gothic welter of its white, green, and red marble facade, actually a 19th century recreation, the interior of the city's cathedral is surprisingly spartan, as most of its treasure has been moved to the adjacent Museo dell'Opera del Duomo. The 11th century baptistry is one of Florence's oldest buildings and most extraordinary. The three doorways into the octangular Romanesque structure tell the story of humanity's redemption that, in the early 1400s, helped usher in a new age that would become known as the Renaissance. The womb-like interior dazzles with its opulent Byzantine-style mosaics, including a gruesome image of Satan devouring sinners which is said to have inspired Dante's Inferno. Begun in 1334 by Giotto, Florence's cathedral's soaring bell tower rises nearly as high as the cathedral's dome. Its elaborate Gothic facade, including 16 life-size statues, represents a who's who of 14th century art. Feeling hardcore, right after climbing the dome's 463 steps, we climb the Campanile's 414. Excited or psychotic? Anyways, we needed to see up close exactly how Brunelski achieved his miracle, 
so we get in line. Look up for a close-up of Asari's last judgment that fills the dome's interior. Its celestial hosts and hellish torments are depicted in a muscular style influenced by Michelangelo's Sistine's Chapel. Then look down, and besides a nice case of vertigo, you get a bird's eye view of the vast cathedral interior below, including the begullying geometry of its marble pavements. This set of steps sits between two separate domes, one inside the other. This doubling enabled one dome to hold up the other as construction continued across the vast gulf of open space. The two domes grow closer and closer as you climb. It seems like the stairs are going around the dome as we go up. So I'm climbing up We're actually climbing up the dome now. Right at the top now. Right? You guys have to You're stand in the sun. <laughs> the sun shining on you. Oh, got DJ. If we go to the other side, of the sun is shining. Okay. Oh, it's too hot. Disappearing into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, shoot. This is really. materials they use to build stuff, to build a dome. But there's more inside the museum. Lots of fun. People are discovering all kinds of stuff about themselves. They're discovering they're scared of heights, they're discovering that they're scared of small spaces. It's hilarious. There's more to this intensely absorbing place than priceless masterpieces. Towers and palaces evoke a thousand tales of its medieval past. Designer boutiques and artisan workshops studded streets. There's a buzzing cafe and bar scene. And when the summer heat simply gets too stifling, vine-laden hills and terraced restaurants are only a short drive away. I absolutely love Florence. Florence. 